How long does it take to get to space? Astronauts reveal how long it actually takes. Even older shuttles will get you into space pretty quickly. The trick to any space launch is getting the spacecraft off the ground in the first place. It takes a lot of energy to fight back against the Earth's gravitational pull. But once you've started, you're going to go up pretty quickly. So, how long does it take to get into space? Firstly, let's definite what space is. If we're talking about the end of the Earth's atmosphere, it's generally accepted to be about 100 kilometers, 62 miles, upwards. This is called the Kármán line. It means you've gone past the thermosphere and are now into the exosphere. For a bit of context, the International Space Station is orbiting the planet at between 435 kilometers, 205 miles, and 435 kilometers, 270 miles, of altitude. How long does it take to get to space? The American shuttle, which has now been retired, would cross the Kármán line at 2 minutes and 30 seconds after launch. It would get up to the altitude of the International Space Shuttle and into proper orbit after about 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Russian Soyuz rockets would make the trip in about the same time. For a bit of a comparison, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, the most powerful operational rocket in the world, launch crossed the Kármán line after 3 minutes and 24 seconds. It was carrying an electric sports car and backed it up with 2.9 million pounds of thrust from a couple of rocket boosters and a core engine. That's roughly equivalent to 18 Boeing 747 jumbo jets all facing directly upwards. How does it feel for the astronauts? Getting into space is a pretty demanding journey, and it takes a physical and mental toll on astronauts. If you think about it, we're accelerating a 4.5 million pound system from 0 miles per hour to its orbital velocity of 17,500 miles per hour in those 8 half minutes. So it's a heck of a ride for the astronauts, explain Mike Leinbach, a launch director at NASA. They typically experience about three times the force of gravity during most of the ascent, and once we reach orbit, when the main engines cut off, they go from that 3G acceleration to zero acceleration virtually instantaneously, and that's when they become weightless on orbit. Staying in orbit Once astronauts are in orbit and aboard the space station, they have to keep it going at a certain speed to stay up there. Otherwise you start getting space stations raining down on the planet. The ISS is moving at 28,163 km per hour. 17,500 miles per hour, in orbit around the Earth. Of course, the astronauts aboard won't feel this speed, the only sign they have is looking down to see planet Earth rotating beneath them. Will regular people get to go into space? One day, but probably not for a long time. Amusingly, one US-based startup company has an ambitious plan to launch a luxury hotel into low Earth orbit. The Aurora station will give space tourists an amazing view of planet of Earth and is supposed to be an affordable way for citizens to enjoy space. Of course, with a 12-night stay aboard starting at around $9.5 million, 6.8 million pounds, we'd take issue with the affordable part. We are launching the first ever affordable luxury space hotel, said Frank Bunger, the CEO and founder of Orion Span the startup behind the idea. Speaking at the Space 2.0 Summit in San Jose, California, Bunger explained that the company was building the hotel itself and that, when finished, it'll be about the size of a large private jet.